Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in into this episode. I am your host, Matar TV, and today I have a very special guest, uh, Chloe Qatar. She is a researcher about the intellectual history of Lebanon. She is currently doing her PhD in the UK um, about the Lebanese history and about the Lebanese civil war specifically. So with her, we're going to be talking today about, we're going to be having a really fun and simple conversation about the Lebanese civil war. We're not going to be go going really into details about it, but it's just as an introduc uh, introduction for um, Lebanese uh, or non-Lebanese who are interested in the Lebanese culture to talk a little bit about the Lebanese civil war, what happened over there, how it ended, um, when did it really start, when did it really end, did it, did it really end, and this kind of conversation. So, Chloe... Thank you so much for joining me into this episode. And if you would like to explain a little bit about what you do to the audience. Thank you, Thank you Ali, for this introduction. So as you said, I am a researcher. I study the Lebanese history and my expertise especially is the Civil War era or periods. And so I am currently finalizing a PhD that looks at the intellectual history of the war. So mainly what was being written back then, the texts, uh, uh, the ideas, the concepts that uh, intellectuals, journalists, ideologues uh, were having back then in the moment. So that's my research, but I'm really glad we're doing this uh, podcast slash video, because as you know, there's very little, uh, I mean, we're not taught the history of the war at, in schools, right? Exactly. And so even in Lebanon or in the expats, even the people who have left have very little knowledge of it. So I think yeah, what, what we're doing is important is just discussing in, 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 in a very simple way, mm -hmm. uh, what was the war about giving kind of this Lebanese civil war one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah, I'm really glad we're doing this today. Exactly, exactly. It's uh, somehow in Lebanon, we don't have uh, actually any books about the Lebanese civil war. And uh, that's why we, sh we, we should do these kind of um, um, videos or podcasts uh, to explain to the people a little bit about it. Um, would, you, would you give us like a little introduction or overview about the, about the Lebanese civil war? Yeah. Uh, I just want to just add something. There are yeah, books sure. on the Lebanese civil war. So maybe at the end of the podcast, we can <laughs> add some titles. Maybe we can add it to the YouTube video so people, if they want to read more about it, sure. can and do. But mm -hmm. I think something you were trying to say is that there's nothing in national curricular. There's nothing in in history books that that we have at school, exactly. right? Uh, that tackle it. But there are historians that mm -hmm. have worked on it, mm -hmm. but not much is available. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's yeah, something. that's 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 what I was trying to say. Like in in the schools, our curriculum like ends by the. But the Second Civil War, uh, sorry, the Second World War, and that's it, <laughs> you know. Exactly. And yeah. there's nothing about the Civil War, which exactly. is, I mean, we can discuss this at the end, right? Yeah. Try to understand how we 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 tackle the legacy of it. But yeah. so, as we know, the Lebanese Civil War was a very long war. It started in 1975 and ended in 1991. Uh, so it's usually described as both an internal Lebanese affair, but also a regional conflict that involved a host of regional and international actors. Okay, so um, I think the most striking thing about it, because it's it's a very long war uh, that had many faces, but it, what we should really remember is that it was a deadly war. Uh, during 15 years of fighting, around 19,000 to 100,000 people lost their lives. And even we don't have the exact number yet. So uh, scholars or historians debate the exact number. But this is around, uh, I mean, this is kind of the gross number. And it is assumed that close to 20,000 in, in, <clears throat> were individuals who were kidnapped or disappeared. And so we don't know anything about them, but uh, we presume that they are dead. And uh, on top of the on top of this, you have one thousand one thousand hundred people who were badly injured, and close to a million people who experienced internal displacement during the war. Mm -hmm. And obviously, much of the infrastructure in Lebanon in all of the regions uh, was destroyed. And so. On top of, of the human cost, we had enormous material loss. Um, so, because it was so long, uh, uh, scholars usually divide it 
right, into, mm -hmm. into different uh, uh, sub-wars. Some scholars say that there are two parts. There's the part that starts in 1975 and ends in 1982 with the, Israel, with the second Israeli invasion. Mm -hmm. And then the other part that's from 82 to, to the 90s. And then you have a bit more uh, uh, detailed, uh, I would say, uh, or more precise uh, division of the war. And, uh, and, and so the scholarship, um, it's known that the two first years of the war so from April 75 to November 76, is called the Two Years' War, Harb mm -hmm. And this war is usually thought of as the really, uh, the really uh, civil aspect of, of the war, or the civil period of the war, because it includes the intense fighting between Lebanese factions. And then when Syria uh, enters Lebanon in 1976, this kind of ushers a new era of the war, right, until uh, 1982, and, it, and it's the period that usually thought of as the regional, or, or when the war starts being really a regional war, because you have external actors such as Syria and, um, and, and Israel, right? And then the Israeli invasion of 1982 in itself, because it was so destructive, and because it created so much, uh, 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 so much shift uh, uh, on, on the ground, uh, is considered as a period in itself. And we, we can discuss this a bit later to understand what happened back then. And then you have, um, after this, you have the, the mountain war uh, mm -hmm. in, in 82, 83, Samoa Harb al-Jabal. And then uh, this is where this phase is where the, so Harb al-Jabal is between Druze and Christians. And then you have, uh, internal war or what is seen as intrasectarian war. So uh, it's groups between themselves who fight together. So you have um, the Harb um, al-Mukhayyamet at the end of, of, so not the end, so from 1985 to 1987, where Palestinian uh, uh, fighters fight Shia forces because back then you had the rise of new Shia militias uh, such as Hezbollah and Amal, who were really growing in forces. And then finally, at the end, you have the intra-Christian wars of uh, 88, from 1988 to the 90s, and which led to the, to the end of the war with Michel Zaun uh, war um, on Samir Jaja, Lebanese forces, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of the chronology, usually, that we give um, of the Lebanese civil war. But it's really important to 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 keep in mind that it was uh, a long war that included a lot of sub conflicts and a lot of shifting alliances mm -hmm. so at, at first the syrians uh, when they came to lebanon they were backing the christian forces but then they changed right and so you had really uh, uh, shifting uh, um, alliances but also uh, uh, shifting motives uh, and it, so it's a really long and complex period that you can't really uh, uh, describe in, in in a few in, in a few words and this mm -hmm. is why some scholars have uh, been kind of advocating that we change the, the the name of the war that we stop calling it the Lebanese civil war but rather calling it the Lebanese wars as a plural because it, it's so complex and, and so and so shifting yeah there's also there's also i i've heard about it when uh, i forgot the, um, his name where he a split from uh, the Lebanese forces and he had an ally with Amal like he, he created an alliance with Amal and I think also with the social party and uh, and here where I, where I just got lost like everyone was like was against everyone uh, like no one knows who was with anyone you know yeah so, exactly yeah, yeah this, especially this, the end of the war yeah and yeah. so this is why for instance uh, leftist parties right Mm -hmm. uh, um, we're going to talk about this maybe later yeah. when we talk about actors. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's there's also um, uh, Harb al Alam, yes. Harb al Alam, Harb al Alam, something like that. No, or, so what, what I was trying to say is that, yeah. uh, as you said, at the mm -hmm. end, there were so many shifting alliances yeah. that uh, um, the, the, the nature of the war, mm -hmm. right? What yeah. is this war? Because yeah. when we say a civil war, right, the civil war and the, 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 the simple sense is that 
two sections of the same population are, are fighting each other, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, 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 in, and in the case of Lebanon, it was usually described as a sectarian war between, so between groups or sects that have different religious identities. But, mm -hmm. but this, is, um, this is not really very this, uh, reflective of what it was because it, it has okay. nothing to do with religion. We're not mm -hmm. fighting because of religion, of religious affairs. We were, they were fighting for power, right? Yeah. And so you had at first kind of two specific uh, uh, sides. Mm -hmm. What we called back then uh, the leftist slash Muslim side, and then the Christian, so the right is Christians, mm -hmm. right? And so at the, at, at the beginning of, of the war, this is how it started. And obviously mm -hmm. for the leftist side, uh, uh, the war uh, was also about uh, economic condition, about uh, improving social and economic conditions. Mm -hmm. But then because it became more and more sectarian, right? Because we can discuss also about this a bit later about uh, the importance of massacres, of sectarian massacres. Uh, um, or leftist orga organizations at some point, so after many years of fighting, uh, uh, said that this was not anymore the war they wanted to fight. It was mm -hmm. not a, a class conflict. It was not anymore a war that is supposed to uh, uh, change the regime, right? It, it was becoming a purely sectarian war. Yeah. And, and there were so many re regional actors back then. And so they, they said that this was not the war anymore they wanted to fight. So, so yeah, it, 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 cha it changed nature and, 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 and motives mainly uh, through it, yeah. So, so you are saying uh, one of the causes of the Lebanese civil war was uh, about the economic situation of the people, or what? 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 What were the causes of the of the Lebanese civil war? And yeah. did it really start like the, the the start date? Was it really April April thirteenth? Yeah, these are really excellent questions, and I think this is kind of what so so the scholars or the or or the scholars that that have written on the war have spent lots of time debating the causes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, debating why the civil war started, especially at this moment. And so uh, um, usually they uh, they determine different type of causes, right? Especially in a war that's so long and that, and that was so, um, also has had a regional aspect. Mm -hmm. they, they, they talk about direct or indirect causes, but also internal and external causes. So there's, plenty of, of type of causes here, and we can just very simply uh, break it down in, in, in this way. Okay. So the, the longer the long term causes, right, are to be seen more as what what was happening, what was happening before 1975. So, so, so historians have started looking at what was happening in the 60s. So for instance, Kamal Salibi in his book on the war, he kind of uh, established a link between the events of 1958 and 75. So he, he, he links, so he kind of see uh, the seeds of the civil war already in the events of, of 58. Other people say that the war hasn't started in 75, but it started in 69 with the Cairo Agreement, right? Which gave Palestinians the right to lead their armed uh, resistance against Israel from Lebanese territory, and which in turn created clashes with the Lebanese army, right? Mm -hmm. but, but so this was kind of a, of a midway of supporting the Palestinian cause, but at the same time asking for uh, the respect of Lebanese sovereignty, which is which was contradictory in itself, right? So 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 obviously scholars have different, uh, not only scholars but even uh, um, people who participated in the war have different interpretation on on when it started, right? Um, obviously, the long term causes is that uh, the Lebanese state in itself it has a fragile structure. It's it's a, it's a weak state somehow, and 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 so it was. From, from back then, from the rise of, of Nasserism, it was continuously exposed to internal division and regional pressure through the 60s and the 70s. So you can see already back then a bipolarization emerging, right? And so the Cairo Agreement in itself <clears throat> shows that the Lebanese state, the Lebanese army was not able to uh, resist either uh, uh, Israeli reprisal, right? Because when the Palestinian resistance 
it's yeah it, it's resistance against israel from south of lebanon this meant that israel was going to uh, to bomb to do uh, to do reprisal and so the lebanese uh, uh, state and the Lebanese security apparatuses were, were not able to just contain all of these tensions. So that there was, so this is what scholars say about the Lebanese state as being, as having a structural weakness, right? Mm -hmm. And then, as you said before, they, on the long run, the 60s, which are usually described as Lebanon's golden age, yeah. but it's not, this is just an image we say now. It was, we were already seeing back then growing inequalities, growing social and economic qualities from the 60s, right? And so sometimes we forget, but at the end of the 60s and during the first part of the 70s, there was waves of social mobilization, right, in Lebanon. Some that really uh, recall the ones that we've seen in 2019. So you had uh, farmers, workers, students, they were, they, they were protesting on a weekly basis back then for various reasons. But the point is that this showed that, the, that <coughs> already back then there was internal tensions, right? So there's an economic component, uh, or, or I would just, there was social uh, uh, unrest back then because mm -hmm. of growing inequalities. Uh, was this under under the uh, uh, not not rain? Uh, I don't know what you call, but the the, the, the president was for Ad Shahab back then, yes. you know, because uh, in our interpretation, um, so, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, in, in our interpretation, like uh, for, uh, when when for Ad Shahab became president after he was the general, this was the golden age of Lebanon, like where the everything was booming, the Switzerland of the East and uh, or the Paris of the yes. Middle East. But you, but you said this is a a, a, a mistake to call yeah. Lebanon the golden age in the sixties. Why? So I think, like like all con like all constructs or exaggeration, I think uh, it was named golden age in a restro restro. I mean, in a, in ulteriorly, right? Because mm -hmm. afterwards we've had the war and we have decades of, of, of destruction, automatically, when you look back at what happened before, it just seems better and shinier. Okay. But also because, uh, um, as you said, this was the, um, the mandate of Fuad al-Shahab, and the mandate of Fuad al-Shahab was indeed a mandate where uh, there were attempts to implement modernization wow. and, uh, develop, uh, and development on, on a regional um, um, I'm sorry, on a national level. So it, it, mm -hmm. it was really about strengthening not only Beirut, but also uh, um, peripheral regions uh, uh, where poverty w was uh, was obviously more important. And so uh, Fouad Shab with his team of, uh, of, of French um, um, advisors had this five years plan for developing uh, Lebanon in terms of infrastructure, of economy, uh, uh, of reducing social inequality. So yeah, you had this uh, uh, kind of um, attempt to address those um, uh, those inequalities. But at the same time, um, you also had this other version of Lebanon, those people taking it to the street that were unhappy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and after Fouad Shahab, you had the mandate of uh, Slayman Frangier, yep. who kind of did not continue the work that the previous administration had put in, right? So yep. <clears throat> it's a two-faced era, right? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, uh, so this was also the time where the banking sector in Lebanon was was strengthening from from the end of the six of, of the fifties until the beginning of six, of the sixties. You had a fledgling banking sector as well. So this is why now we think of it as the banks, tourism, etc., because we have this shiny image of it. But actually, okay. it's, it's it's there's two sides of the medals here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. Um, the mandate of Fahad Shab ended and then Suleiman Frangi came and civil war happened under the mm -hmm. mandate of, of Suleiman Frangi. So who yes. were who were at first? Because as, as you said, it's the Lebanese wars, you know, but who was at first the participants of the Lebanese civil war? And, you know, how not into details, but at the end, where uh, what were the part participants at the end and at the beginning? 
Okay. Yeah. So, um, so uh, we were talking about the long-term causes, right? And the immediate mm-hmm. causes, as we know, is kind of this infamous bus massacre, right? Of Ain on 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 13 April 1975, where the Christian phalanges, so has been Kataib, killed 27 Palestinians. <clears throat> Who were passing through Ain al-Ramene in a bus? We know it. Uh, we know it a, 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 a lot because we've heard of it. Because this is considered as the main event that triggered the war. So it's the most remembered. We find it in movies. We find it in in literature and fiction. Uh, and so, <clears throat> obviously, the main actor of the war here, or or one of the most important, uh, is the Kata party, but not only. Uh, so. Um, um, following this event, this event, what happened is that um, the leftist parties uh, kind of automatically condemned this act, this act, and and what what uh, unfolded then is that uh, uh, political polarization really increased. So there was an absence of any attempt to reach consensus on part of the many community leaders on on, on part of the many. Uh, political parties back then, which really led to a prolonged political deadlock, right? Mm-hmm. And made, at this specific point, military action the, privi- the, the privileged mean, right, to impose one's will on another. And I'm saying this because, um, of course, we, 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 we take 13 April as the start of the civil war. But actually, before this, if you look at books, in 1974, for instance, if you pick any day of the year, the previous year, you would also have such deadly clashes that involved killing of civilians, right? So it happened on this day uh, because the, after this day, there was really, uh, 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 and this is what I'm trying to say, is that the war was a political choice because at the specific point, there was so much tension uh, 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 growing and building up that both sides kind of decided not to communicate anymore and, and not to uh, um, and, and not to reach consensus. And so after this point, the polarization I'm talking about really took shape and you had kind of two fronts battling each other, right? So you had, uh, as I said, uh, uh, Al Kataib, who were a part of the Lebanese Front, Jabhat al Lebanonie, which was created as a, as a response to the Lebanese National Movement, um, which is the leftist front, right? Uh, in the in the front, you had the Kataib, uh, so the Falangist Party. You had uh, Shamoun's uh, previous president, Kamil Shamoun's uh, National Liberal Party. Uh, you had also Slaiman Frangie <laughs> for a moment, who was the also an ex-president, <clears throat> and you had also other other smaller militias such as Tanzim and the Guardian of Cedars. Okay, mm-hmm. and then in in on the other side. You had Harak uh, al the Lebanese National Movement, which is the leftist front. It was spearheaded by Kamal Jumblat, uh, who was back then obviously a, a Druze leader, leader, but also uh, the head of the Progressive Socialist Party. And in the same way, this front was comprised of various parties uh, uh, the Communist Party, uh, <coughs> the Ba'ath Party. Um, the communist organization, uh, mm-hmm. other communist organization as well, uh, and and also organization that supported the Palestinian uh, resistance, resistance in Lebanon. And, and these were the two main actors of the war. Hala, you asked me, as you said, uh, these in 75, are they the same uh, 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 at the end of the war? They're not, because, um, for instance, Kamal Jumblat is killed two years into the war. It doesn't mean that um, uh, the Lebanese national movement stopped uh, being active, but uh, the the power balance shifts because along the way, some militias grew stronger, for instance, such as Amal, such as Hezbollah. And then uh, um, 15 years later, uh, uh, the Lebanese front is something that's kind of that doesn't really exist anymore. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, from the 75 until 82, you had the Lebanese forces militia that uh, um, that grew, and that's something that didn't exist previously 
uh, so before 75, right? And 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 and, the, and it was uh, the compilation of different Christian militias under the, the, the leadership of Bashir Ismail. And when when he was killed, <coughs> when he was assassinated in 82, afterwards also you can see uh, the Lebanese forces changing in leadership, uh, 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 changing its strategy. So yeah, at the end of the war, it so you you had some of these same organization mm -hmm. and you had new ones but it, they were not exactly the same okay 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 i understand so <clears throat> during like this uh it was 15 years 16 years of a war and what do you think are the most striking events that happened uh, that may have changed the course of the civil war or, or may have left like the biggest impacts on the Lebanese civil war, like the, the most, like uh, what I mean by that, like maybe massacres, assassinations, this kind of stuff. <coughs> okay, <coughs> apologies. I don't know why what's yeah. happening. Me so. too. I have to drink water. You, uh, I don't know why. It's <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, the I think the the most striking things, right? Now we're talking about these actors, about these names. Uh, Kamal Jumblat, uh, Kataib, etc. But I mean, some people don't even remember this, or some people don't really know about about this person. But what they remember most about the war, especially the newer generation, uh, is what their parents told them about, mm -hmm. right? And 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 the most striking thing about this war is the mass mass violence that took place, the massacre that that made up the war. Because it wasn't only kind of street to street fighting. It wasn't only uh, <clears throat> so because it's a civil war. It's not two armies fighting them, uh, fighting each other. You have militias. You have groups with uh, with arms. You have just random civilians taking up weapons and fighting each other. So you have a different type of warfare, and and and. And it all happened uh, in kind of a, a, a small ter territory somehow. And so what we remember most is those several massacres that took place and that mainly killed thousands of civilians, Lebanese, Palestinian, it doesn't matter, but it, it, the, the main victims were civilians. And this is what we should remember. So the first massacre, as we know, is the Ayn al incident. Yeah. Uh, uh, which which uh, cost the life to 27 Palestinians. But these were, again, followed by uh, a specific logic of massacres that's, that some scholars call ethnic cleansing, right? Because the point of these massacres were not only retaliation, because at some point, right, they massacred here, so the other, so the other front or the other uh, side of war massacred there, to 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 kind of get in this logic of revenge but it was not only this there was a specific logic of ethnic cleansing and the point was to form homogeneous cantons or homogeneous zones right and to make sure that they were not not <clears throat> kind of uh, 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 enemy population within uh, the era that that we controlled right and so and this was done by by both uh, by both sides so the killing of civilians as i said became a cycle of revenge uh, and, and and those massacres especially happened during the two years war uh, the first ma major incident <clears throat> was Black Saturday, Sept al-Aswad, mm. which happened on 6 December 75, and where phalangists killed between 150 and 20, <coughs> sorry, and, and 200 uh, civilians in, in East Beirut. And this is what was called Dabah uh, al-Hawi. So mm -hmm. it means uh, uh, you just pull up your identity card, or if your name was um, Hamad or here, I don't know, Sherbil, then you would just be killed. Uh, based on your sect, based uh, on your sectarian identity. Also, yes. like because we also had religion on the ID, so they will yeah. see their religion and then just slaughter. Exactly. That's why we had to then cancel the religion on the ID because of this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's why it's called uh, 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 um, murder based on on the IDs okay. because, yeah. as you said, this information was available. Mm -hmm. And so, Sept al Aswad is is it's, we still remember it now because it was just this kind of barbaric and just irrational uh, 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 um, 
uh, massacre that happened here in Saifi in, in, in the middle of Beirut where just people were just some of these people were cleaners who were doing nothing they weren't even fighters right mm. and so it was just killed in this way and then so this caused retaliation uh, um, the the harakil was civilians in the slums of Maslah and Karantina in they also bombarded the coastal cities of Damur and Jiye, uh, which also caused the deaths of hundreds of inhabitants. In the meantime, the revenge cycle continues. Uh, um, uh, the Kata'ib laid the, the siege on the Palestinian camp of Tal Zatar, which was a, a refugee camp in the Easter zone back then, because then we, we're going to talk about this uh, um, later on. And so the camp fell in August 76 and Syrian forces kind of accepted or helped uh, uh, this, this, massacre to, to, this massacre to happen. And, <clears throat> and again, numbers are not exact, but we're pretty sure that thousands of Palestinian, mostly civilians, died uh, during the siege and its aftermath. And since we're talking about this, the other big massacre that we know about, and that's really uh, kind of, um, and I mean, I'm not saying this in, in, in a, in a, in a, in a I'm, I'm not saying this in a positive way, but it's true that the Sabra and Shatila massacre is kind of the massacre that we remember the most. And, and, and it's kind of this iconic event that is now really associated with the civil war because it was so much uh, uh, talked about in the international press and because it happened really in a very vicious way the killings were, were the viciousness of the killings was was so striking that you have you have plays you have testimonies about this uh, that went beyond Lebanese circle and it and it and it and it and it got uh, uh, the word got out in, in the international press, and so uh, this this ha this happened after the invasion of Lebanon by the Israeli Defense Forces, uh, and so and this is what I was telling you that the Israeli invasion, just of eighty two, right? Because the, the, it also it it also it also happened earlier, but the, but in, in nineteen eighty two, in the summer uh, uh, of it, when the Israeli uh, uh, forces arrived to Beirut, right, which was completely unique as an event, uh, it, it started shelling West Beirut. And, and, and it's, it should be considered as really an instance of mass violence because the invasion itself was the most violent incident of the war. At least 70,000 people lost their lives as a consequence of this. And, and so uh, um, um, what happened as well during this is that, uh, as we know, the Lebanese forces, aided by Israelis, even if now they they, um, they deny it, they entered the Sabra and Shatila uh, uh, camps and they massacred um, 2,000, maybe, again, all of these numbers are never sure because scholars don't have exact figures, but the point is to say that thousands of civilians always die uh, because of these massacres. And, and, and the viciousness of the, the killings we have descriptions, we have testimonies of what was being done to the mm -hmm. bodies, to women, to children. And so, yes, this these instances of mass massacre is, 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 is really what what we should remember of the war to just keep this in mind and never and and, and because even now today we hear yes uh, it's possible that we are heading towards a war that's not something that should be so easy to to to, to be said right we should think first of what what a war means yeah. and 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 i'm just going to end this because it's not really um i'm going to end this topic with just adding something because it's not the most joyful of of subjects that a part of these kind of really big massacres, you have all, you had also what scholars talk <clears throat> described as kind of um, more habitual forms of, of mass violence. So that happened more on a daily basis, kidnappings, roadblock execution. So you just you just passed in with your car, and if it, if if the, if there was a hedges or like something like this, then you would get killed. Uh, again, depending mm -hmm. on your on your identity, there mm -hmm. was revenge killings between civilians, torture. There was just random shelling of residential areas, care bombs, planting bombs, right? And another thing that we also remember from the war is the green line, the demarcation line that separated Beirut into two sections, and we call it the green line because 
uh, because yeah, at some point you just no one would cross it anymore because you had snipers uh, on top of buildings making sure that the separation of space was respected, right? Because now each had their own zone and they controlled their spaces. And so over the time, uh, along this line, uh, uh, you had foliage and like just greenery that started growing, mm -hmm. right? And it became the green line because, because of the coloration of, of it, right? And so this is really the iconography. This is what we remember of the war mostly, massacres, the green line. And, 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 and unfortunately, this has entered what we call the mythology of the war, right? Mm -hmm. Those images that we, 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 we remember the most somehow. Okay, okay. So there's a lot of massacres happened, like major events besides like the daily conflicts and like there's also the um, hotel conflicts, hotels conflict that was also happening at the beginning of the civil war and this kind and, and this kind of stuff. How were we able, like after 15 years or 16 years of, of civil war, how, how were we able to actually end it? And did, did, did anyone win? What, what was the outcome of it? You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really something that's important to say when talking about the civil war is mm -hmm. that, um, as I was telling you, uh, civil the civil war was a polit was a political choice, right? It uh, you, you have organizations or, or, or parties or militias that decide to go to war, and um, <clears throat> there's a there's a, a sample of the scholarship on wars that say that uh, in the first years of the civil war it's really hard. To, to, to attempt conflict resolution. Because once you've started using weapons as a way to enforce your will on, on, your, on, your, on your opponent, it, it's really, once you have this tool, it's really hard to say, look, let's try the political way. Let's try to resolve it uh, with negotiation. So some, some scholars talk about wars having an inner clock. Right, saying that at some point when military means uh, really prove uh, inefficient, and in our case, it took a decade and more than a decade to prove that nobody actually won by using weapons. This is when, uh, after, after these attempts, and this is when expectations of those parties uh, start diminishing, and when they start seeing that they've tried and they've tried by fighting, but they didn't get anywhere. So it takes a lot of time for them, for all of these conflictual parties to get to this point, right, where there's, okay, now, now, now we need to, to get uh, to, to the table of negotiation. And so in the Lebanese case, you had many attempts uh, of bringing the, those parties to 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 uh, to negotiation, to to a roundtable from um, from various international partners, uh, and 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 it took at the end of the war, it took more than twelve attempts to to get uh, uh, various parties together. And so what happened at the end is like one of these attempts uh, uh, led to uh, uh, the Ta the Ta'if agreement. So this main this this main document that now is now known as having put an end to the war and so it was negotiated in in ta'if in saudi arabia in september uh, 1989 by the surviving members of the lebanese parliament that has been elected in 72 because since then there was no election so mm -hmm. those uh, the surviving ones that so the one uh, who didn't die during the war they they, they met in ta'if uh, uh, and they discussed this um, this this document, and it, and it was approved. Uh, the Ta'if agreement, although it succeeded in putting an end to the war, it didn't resolve the main issues or the core topics uh, we started the conflict for, right? Whether the division of power in Lebanon, because the leftist. Uh, uh, parties in 75 were asking for abolishing sectar political sectarianism, right? Which the, the Lebanese Front was against because they, they thought that this uh, uh, protected minorities' rights, so mm -hmm. Christian rights. So mm -hmm. the Ta'if agreement uh, uh, recognized the fact that we needed to abolish sectarianism, but it never gave a framework to do so. So from the, from, from the 90s until now, we've never actually done this, we've never abolished this. And it didn't really resolve the Palestinian refugee issue, which was one of the main components for why uh, uh, the war was started, because the leftists 
back then uh, 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 thought that we should support the Palestinian resistance and end their attack against Israel, while uh, the Lebanese front thought that we, it, it wasn't our duty to uh, support this. It didn't also resolve the, the, the presence of Syrian forces on Lebanese soil and Syrian tutelage, and even Hezbollah's arms or armed militias, the problem of armed militias, which but at the end of the war was becoming really a phenomenon that uh, uh, that was really dominant. So I, I thought it didn't really resolve all of these all of these issues. And and most importantly, and this is what what I think it, it rejoined what you said about the war continuing somehow, uh, uh, is that there was something called the amnesty law. I don't know if you've heard of it, but uh, two years ago or a year ago, again, there was some discussions again about the amnesty law. But in 1991, uh, the Lebanese parliament also uh, um, um, approved, uh, so an amnesty law is just a law that retrospectively exempts a group of people from criminal liability, right? Mm -hmm. So all the crimes that were committed in Lebanon before March 1991, so mainly during the Everything. whole war, mm -hmm. were not prosecuted. This is what the law stated. So all criminals were never held accountable uh, uh, for the for the war crimes they did, and only political crimes were prosecuted. So, for instance, uh, the assassination of Kamal Jumblat or the assassination of Bashir Ismaili. Right? These were the, the the crimes deemed worthy of, of of prosecution. And so the amnesty law can be seen as an inter elite agreement. It's like all of these Zuama al Harib, they agreed to put down their arms. And, and but without mutually prosecute each other, right? And so it was mutual impunity mm -hmm. because there was no clear winner. And this is why one of the slogans of the war, Shi'ar al Harib, is uh, in French it's called Ni vaincu, ni vainqueur. But the point is that nobody won and nobody lost, right? Mm -hmm. That's the point is that I mean, because of the amnesty law and because the Ta'if the Accord, even though it succeeded in stopping uh, um, military conflict. Those didn't resolve any of, of, of the core issues of the war. And, and most importantly, it allowed the, 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 the wartime leadership to survive the, in the post-war era. And this is why we still see them today mm -hmm. in Lebanese politics, because they never had to face, I mean, people are going to say Samir Jaja, OK, but you know, that's not enough. You need, you need proper, we never had proper justice. We never had, especially for the crimes against civilians. Exactly. And, and all of these war, uh, war leaders never faced uh, justice. And this, the fact that they escaped prison allowed them to reinvest their political uh, uh, networks afterwards. And they are, they are also looked upon like as, as, as idols and, you know, like the, he's the, our savior and he's, I don't, I don't yeah. know what, although everyone, everyone committed crimes and everyone should have accountable for their crimes, whatever their crimes was. Like some, some people might say, ah, oh, yeah, we did commit crimes, but forgive us. <laughs> that No, we, we, sh we shouldn't because that leaves, that, that leaves an open place that these crimes can happen again and again and again and no one will be held, held, held accountable. And this is also one of the major flaws about the Taif agreement. As you said, it didn't actually resolve anything. It's just kind of like a pinky swear. Hey, let's not shoot each other. And that's, and that's it, you know, it's like, but it didn't actually resolve any of the aspects or the problems that led to the civil war. And then afterwards, no one was held accountable. And uh, here we are. That's why Lebanon is suffering politically and economically and everything today because of nothing was resolved. You know, yeah. and uh, I completely agree. And just to add on the top of the court, just to, to to explain how these uh, this this document that was kind of the the, the result of of the war, uh, um, uh, how it impacted our post-war politics. So a, a part of the Ta'if agreement was to reorganize uh, um, uh, political power somehow, right? So, so what it did is that it transferred executive, the, some part of the exec, executive power from the presidency of the republic to the council of ministers, mm -hmm. right? As a collective body, 
okay? But the exact destination of the transferred presidential powers remained unclear. So it, it vested lots of power in the cabinet, okay, where religious parity or where consensus is always needed as a guarantee uh, uh, to have equality between communities, right? And this is why until now we have problem in forming governments mm -hmm. because it always needs to reflect the different religious group, the different religious sects. And when and because the cabinet has so much executive power and, 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 and us having so much difficulty even forming cabinets makes it that we have a, a, a flawed executive uh, 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 power. It, it doesn't work well. And this is why we can't address any major crisis in Lebanon today. And that's that's also a legacy of Ta'if. And that's also a legacy of the war. So to actually resolve these kind of issues is to abolish all um, these laws that says, yeah, like six for Muslims, six for yeah. Christians and, the, and this kind of stuff. Uh, because, um, but do you think we can actually accomplish that and will like because that's what actually led to the civil war like one part they wanted to the other part didn't want to that's also what it is today do you think yeah. this can actually eventually happen well i think it can happen and i think uh, um the thought of agreement identified and recognized the need for this so it mm -hmm. shows that even back then uh, uh the establishment or the political elites uh, uh, saw that political sectarianism or at least sectarian representation uh, uh, was not a functional way of governance. And so, and today, especially after the Thawra, the mentalities have changed mm -hmm. and, and, and people are more accepting of this. So it might happen, it, it could happen. But the, the point is to understand that even if we abolish political sectarianism, it doesn't mean that all of our problems are going to be resolved, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, so the economic crisis today, it's not only a consequence of political sectarianism, it's not only a consequence of the fact that the president is Maronite and the, and the, and the prime minister is Sunni, et cetera, et cetera. It's also, um, it also has to do with the post-war uh, political economy. So the mm -hmm. economic choices that were taken after the war, especially because back then everyone, I mean, the, the point was to reconstruct uh, the country, to, to rebuild the infrastructure, to make it economic and socially viable again. But the choices that were taken back then on, on, on how to, because I don't want to go into the details of the political economy, but the choices back then made that overall our government uh, was really indebted and this is why today we have such a high national debt mm -hmm. so we have to understand that yes political sectarianism has uh, wrecked the country and it was especially a door that facilitated corruption but it's not only this if we only think if we only focus our our thought on this and yes uh, um we're going to abolish sectarianism everything is going to be all right that's not true it's exactly. it's, it's more complex this yeah. we also need yeah. yeah we also need to to see how uh, executive power should be redesigned again as yeah. well and and have uh, have more regulatory powers on how banks work in lebanon and how, and have a, a clear economic vision for the country yeah yeah exactly exactly um so one last question i promise yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, um okay so we, we have talked about like about uh, everything that happens like politically and and this kind of stuff so the next step for us would be is to actually unite the lebanese people and i really do believe change can come to lebanon but not in my time not i don't want to say in my time but i really do believe like in 20 or 30 or 40 years uh because you do need time to um to 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 educate people about what actually happened about who to follow who on, based on what to follow a specific leader and this kind of stuff do you think we should um because we, we would like for the next generation to be wiser than our like or us and our parents that actually did kind of lead to the civil war and do you do you agree with me that we should also implement uh the lebanese civil war in our history books in, in in schools to educate uh our children or students or new students to know more about this topic yeah i mean 
definitely that's something that is i don't think we can escape this mm -hmm. i don't think we can escape uh, uh learning uh, um what happened to to better understand why we got there and how we can uh, avoid this right mm -hmm. and understand why uh, uh, sectarian hatred if there was anything uh, like this or 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 whatever we can we can uh, call it was so uh, brought us to this stage right brought us to this to this civil war so obviously uh, uh, we need to have in the national curriculum uh, a chapter on the civil war uh, until now it didn't happen under the excuses that um, this would reignite sectarian conflict or it was re it would reignite old feelings or, or old traumas but but the truth is that there were other, many wars i mean apart from our wars and all of these wars uh, uh their histories was written and and and, and they, they are there are people in lebanon who are who can absolutely write this this uh, the, the history of of the war in the most objective manner mm -hmm. and the point is not to say there's an absolute truth the point is to explain the factors that led to this the, the, the different perspective the different opinions in a balanced way and explain uh, uh, um, the social economic political ideological factors that that led to this and and when you offer such a narrative or such an explanation to students they, they will understand they will not be uh, 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 i mean obviously each individuals react differently but but having the conversation will allow a, a, a higher degree of acceptation, a higher degree of, of, of critical thinking, and not having the discussion will, on the contrary, uh, 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 re keep those constructed ideas or those pre-construct uh, uh, judgment that we have on the war uh, even more uh, important today. So we need to have something in the national curricula, but we also need to have uh, um, memory work so we need to also uh, address all of these different memories uh, uh, all of i mean because there are different ways the older generation remembers the war and we need to address this and we need to engage with it right and and, and accept that there are going to be d different memories but that they can coexist and that we should remember those mm -hmm. and, and and accept this yeah yeah I think our leaders are just afraid to look bad in our history books. So that's why the I think until now they still haven't implemented, you know, the yeah. civil war in our in our history books. So, yeah. but it is it is it is it is a really important subject or topic to yeah. to educate the next generation about it and such. You know, but you know yeah. that's why we do such an interviews because right now everyone has an iPhone or you know an account on YouTube yeah. so they can watch yeah. this episode. Um, on that note, thank you very much um, for joining uh, this episode or for talking about the Lebanese civil war. Um, do you have anything you would like to add to the topic? Well, what we can do is... I think it's um, something with the internet. Chloe, you disappeared. Sorry, Ali, I'm going to go You froze so hard. It always happens, always. They might be recording or something, they might be Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you wanted to, you wanted to say something and to add to, to the topic. Yes, I think um, I think people should the ones who are interested should look more into the available scholarship that exists. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry, there are books available. We can add maybe some titles uh, to the podcast. Sure, sure. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. I can also, um, uh, if, if everyone watching this um, on YouTube, you can, um, the the titles of the book is going to be in the description. So, yeah, sure. No problem. Perfect. No problem. Perfect. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's not the best final. Uh... No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Uh so um thank you everyone for watching uh, this video if you're watching on youtube or if you're listening to the podcast thank you for listening if you would like to um, um to know more about the uh, about not just the lebanese civil war but also the lebanese history the modern history or anything make sure to follow chloe on uh, instagram and her username is lab.historian and uh, go over there give her a follow and check out her she, she posts like really really interesting stuff about um, uh, lebanon and uh, chloe thank you 
so much for joining me into, into this episode. I hope we can do some more episodes in the future about the Lebanese history if you would be interested. And um, thank you, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And peace out. See you guys later.